Pavel, let's talk a little bit about your assessment of the situation on the ground. It certainly seems as if Russian forces are making fewer gains than maybe the authorities in Moscow would have anticipated. What do you see happening next? Well, yes, the Russian forces are off uh, schedule and uh, they have achieved much less than was apparently appreciated or hoped to at the beginning of this operation. Uh, but of course, the plans always have to be modified when uh, you meet the enemy in the field. And of course, Russia still has the initiative. That's a sure thing. And it has air superiority. It has sea superiority. Uh, so yes, Russia can uh, continue to press its uh, forces forward. Uh, but there's problems and there's increasing problems. Actually, the Ukrainians have surprised not only Russians, but also the Western analysts who believe that their organized mm. resistance will last just three days and then Kiev would fall and there would be maybe guerrilla warfare, but they're still fighting as a coherent military force. And that's a bit of a problem for Russia, especially since the season is, uh, for fighting is expiring. Uh, yeah. It's still rather cold there, and there's some snow if you see uh, footage from the battlefields, at least in some parts. So it's all going to melt, and there's going to be a lot of water in the rivers and creeks. Right. That's not real good. Well, Pavel, let's talk about the support that Ukraine is getting from other Western countries. You have Germany breaking with precedent in some set, sense, saying that they will send weapons to Ukraine. We were just getting headlines out of Finland that they will provide uh, rifles with ammo and anti-tank weapons. Logistically, though, with the situation on the ground, how easy is it to get that support to Ukraine? How quickly can that actually make a difference in this fight? Uh, well, Ukraine, of course, has some weapons. Some were supplied before the outbreak of the Russian invasion. Uh, and there's right now a channel through Poland. Of course, uh, before the Russians went in, there were plane loads of uh, transport planes coming in from the West, from the United States, Canada, other places, Britain, bringing in supplies. Now, of course, that's not working. But through over the Polish border, uh, weapons can come in. And uh, what's also very important is the change of attitude in the West. Since the Ukrainian military, their uh, command structure is still intact, that means if before mostly they were supplying kind of guerrilla style, shoulder launch, uh, stingers and uh, javelins and so on, now actually they'll most likely, there have been announced plans in Europe that they'll be sending in jets, uh, helicopters, uh, heavy guns, missiles, I mean, so that's what's supplied to a fighting yep. army. And that would be a problem for Russia. The, the, the Russian forces, as you say, may be making less progress. What does that tell us about the ultimate objective here and whether or not that needs to change? Is regime change still possible? Is holding this country possible? What is the more medium-term picture evolving uh, into right now, do you think, Pavel? Well, uh, we don't, don't need to guess. Today, President Vladimir Putin talked to the French President Macron, and the Kremlin announced that Russian objectives after the talk are the same. That means taking over Ukraine, uh, demilitarizing it fully, to, to, uh, destroying the Ukrainian military as an existing force, uh, re replacing it most likely with Russian forces that will be there, and maybe some kind of uh, uh, police force for Ukraine. Uh, Ukraine, the new Ukrainian government has to recognize Crimea as Russian, uh, agree to other territorial concessions. So Russia is still pursuing its maximum plan. Well, and finally, in terms of what Russia is at least p thinking about pursuing, President Putin over the weekend setting his nuclear arsenal on special regime of high alert combat duty. Do you see any real probability that nuclear force starts to be used here? Well, the threat is there. Uh, what uh, Putin did, that's what, uh, say, an American president will go into another notch of uh, um, the uh, uh, DEFCON uh, level of readiness. Uh, Russia did not publish its uh, levels, but we also, America has five, we apparently have four. So that's what they did, and they announced it. But that's okay. a threat of use of, uh, military, of nuclear weapons, and not against Ukraine, it's against the United States, primarily. Yeah. And so, yes, I mean, there's the threat is there, 
uh, it seems remote, uh, but uh, Putin doesn't have that many uh, arguments. He doesn't have that, that many aces up his sleeve in the present situation, especially with the uh, his war chest. Uh, the reserves of a central bank, most yeah. many, most of them have been frozen. And so right. he may actually resort to nuclear weapons, at least as a demonstration. It's so a this scary... It's uh, discussed in Russian uh, plans. It's exploding a nuclear device over somewhere over the seas, I don't know, over the Atlantic, in an empty place yeah. where it won't make any uh, casualties, but to demonstrate that Russia is dead serious and is ready to use the bomb.